It's an honor this evening to be here with you, Gail, and with your family and the friends of our wonderful city. The significant, meaningful contributions that you and Larry and your family have made are well known throughout our community. Salt Lake City is a better place to live because of you. Indeed, the entire state of Utah has benefited from your collective vision and benevolence. I add my voice of appreciation and profound respect to those who have spoken earlier. Gail, I know you may be thinking like country singer Garth Brooks when he said, any award you get is usually for something you've done in the past, and I like to keep looking forward. Keep looking forward is the essence of the Miller family legacy here in Salt Lake City. And I'm sure that's much in your mind tonight, Gail. Among all things Gail has done, I believe the most important thing is the personal care and nurturing she has given to her family, her neighbors, and her friends. It was not e always easy for Gail to be the partner and companion of our dear friend Larry, who was driven to accomplish remarkable things. Gail was always there to encourage, sustain, and support Larry and all that he did. And she is carrying on today the mantle Larry placed on her as faithful partners do. While talking to her son, Greg, he shared with me the following. My mom has always been an example of service. Throughout my life, I have seen her serve countless people in various capacities. As a young boy and a teenager, she held many church callings, including service in the Relief Society and various teaching positions. She also cared for my dad tirelessly. I observed one of the most memorable demonstrations of her love for him and the willingness to serve when I was about 17 years old. Construction had just been completed on the first building my dad ever built, a new dealership for the Toyota store in Murray, Utah. The floor between the service department and the mechanics counter in the parts department was finished in tile. It was beautiful and added a nice touch to the building. The ribbon cutting was scheduled with some high-ranking Toyota executives from Japan. During the time between completion of the building and the ribbon cutting, that tile floor received a lot of foot traffic from the technicians walking back and forth from their workstations. Their boots had a little oil and grease on them. That oil and grease accumulated on the tile floor and the grout, and before long, it was very dirty. Prior to the river cutting, my mom got a bucket of hot, soapy water and a brush and personally scrubbed that floor on her hands and knees. Not only did that teach me a lesson about service and humility, it made a strong impression on every employee who witnessed it. Here she was, the wife of the owner of the dealership, and she was willing to perform this kind of service. That's not something you see every day." Close quote. From my personal experience, that's a good way to describe Gail. You don't see people like her every day. I visited with her and other family members often when Larry and the family members were in the hospital. Almost every time I was there, Gail also was providing comfort and support to her family. 
I was always impressed with her tenderness, faith, strength, even during the most difficult times. From my personal experience, that's a good way to describe Gail. You don't see people like her every day. I visited with her and other family members often when Larry was in the hospital. Almost every time I was there, Gail was there providing comfort, as I've stated. I was always impressed with her tenderness, and they're repeating something on the teleprompter that uh, shouldn't be there. But anyway, we'll carry on the best we can. We'll try now. Gail is such an extraordinary person that it came as no great surprise to me when many months after Larry had passed away, she came to me and confided that, that there were several men who wanted to date her. Do you remember that, Gail? She asked me what she should do. I counseled her to be sure I met everyone and that I would have to clear them for such an activity. It was a great day when Gail and Kim came to my office and Kim said, quote, I understand. I need your blessing to marry Gail. Shortly thereafter, I performed their marriage for time in the Bountiful Temple. From Kim, I learned the following. One of my first memories of Gail was spending an evening at the Welfare Square Cannery while she worked shoulder to shoulder with our neighbors canning food storage for her and Larry and their children and their families. She is thrifty and hardworking. While she was Relief Society, President, she not only carried on her significant public business responsibilities, but faithfully served our ward members. She held lunches, interesting activities, such as temple visits and movie days in her home for a cadre of older sisters. But her real service was done quietly, one-on-one. -on -one. Kim continued, a single woman whose husband had committed suicide and was essentially trapped in her home because of illness and depression. She had a fire in her home for which she was uninsured. Gail learned of her plight and personally, without assistance from anyone, went to her house and with her own hands pulled up carpets, and took steps to make her home habitable. The only assistance she asked for was of the young men to help remove burned carpets, debris out of the driveway and dispose of it. Yes, tonight we truly honor a giant in our city. I know that we could take a survey of those who lived in our neighborhood and in our community, and we could find uh, similar stories in abundance of Gail serving and lifting those in need. Gail's efforts to serve others were in addition to the demands of raising her own children and helping her grandchildren and supporting them and and supporting a very visionary husband. Gail also assumed the responsibility for holding the Larry H. Miller organization and family together while tending to Larry in his years of illness, which kept him home, often in bed or in the hospital. Of course, no one will ever know the full measure of the love Larry and Gail Miller have for our city, as manifested by the number of times they have stepped in to solve a problem in our community. Such philanthropic service was a strong and lasting thread binding together the fabric of their lives. Thank you, Gail. 
for you and your family continuing to do so much and for all of us. I'm certain there'll be volumes in heaven devoted to recording the many good and kind things you have done and will continue to do. When Gail was asked what she wanted to be remembered for, she said she wanted to be remembered as a virtuous woman. From the 31st chapter of Proverbs, I read just a few lines. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She worketh willingly with her hands. She riseth while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengthen her arms. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of count kindness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. A woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. When these verses of Scripture are cast in modern times and applied to a woman who lives in our time, surely Gail Miller qualifies and excels in every respect. May God bless you, Gail, and your family as you continue to lift the burdens of others and advance for good our city and state. We love you and congratulate you, Gail. You are a virtuous woman and a very deserving giant in our city. Thank you.